Hey there, it's Lara here with your Witchy Wednesday weekly astrology video for July 25th to 31st, 2018. Thank you for being here as always. Um, I really appreciate your interactions. And, um, you know, if this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoy what I have to say. I hope it resonates with you. And if it does, I'd really appreciate it if you commented, liked, subscribed to the channel, that kind of thing. Um, and I always love to know what's going on for you. And if you'd like to share that, like, you know, sort of how these things that I'm talking about in the videos, how are they being felt for you personally or experienced for you personally? You know, and if you have any questions, then I always try my best to address those as well. So feel free to, to leave those in the comments below as well. Um, also, just to say, you know, if you want to sort of keep up to date and have more information and more interaction, you can do that or more regular interaction by um, coming on over and liking my, my Facebook page, which I'll leave the link to below, or on Instagram as well, where I kind of post additional tidbits and information and that kind of thing. So, um, and lastly, of course, if you would like to get a personal reading and for me to take a look at your own chart and talk about that um, very specific to you, I would love to do that for you. I also do tarot readings um, and you can find out what's uh, what I have to offer if you click the link below in the description box and, box and you can go to my website and, and check that out. Because in these readings, you know, I talk about sort of the collective energies um, and I do address specifics in terms of, you know, the rising signs or each sign. But if you want a really specific look at your own personal chart, then we can only do that through um, through a chart reading. OK, so. The really big news this week is the total lunar eclipse that's happening in Aquarius at about four degrees Aquarius on July 27th. Um, and so I'm going to spend this video discussing that and not really talking about, you know, anything else because this will take up enough time and it's really the significant thing that's going on, right, for all of us. So we are between two solar eclipses right now. Um, I've mentioned, I mentioned in last week's video, I think, maybe the week before, um, when I talked about the, the eclipse, the solar eclipse in Cancer, that this summer we're actually, this eclipse season sees us um, having three eclipses, which is, you know, unusual because there really, there's normally only two. So this is happening in threes. And so we had a solar eclipse, this one coming on July 27th is going to be a, a lunar eclipse. And then we're having another solar eclipse in August on the 11th, which I will talk about, um, you know, in the next couple of videos. But for today, we're going to focus on this total lunar, lunar eclipse that's happening on July 27th. Um, but keeping in mind, right, that eclipses come in and usually in pairs, again, this time in threes, and they work they work off each other. They work as a pattern. They work together. Um, and solar eclipses are generally about some kind of, you know, major shakeup kind of thing. Um, what, where, where, you know, and a, and a beginning in some, in some way, whereas lunar eclipses tend to be more about a shedding or a letting go, um, you know, and, and often more on an internal than an external level. Level. So I'm going to talk more in detail about that as I go through um, the details here. So what's happening? Why is this lunar eclipse so such a big deal, right? We have eclipses every year, um, usually twice. Well, we have them, the cycles twice a year, um, two different points in the year. We have eclipse cycles. So why is this one such a big deal? Um, because it is the most potent lunar eclipse that we have experienced in a century. And that's because it is, um, it will be visible for a very long time, not in all parts of the world, mostly in, in Africa, parts of Europe, India. So mostly, mostly in the East rather than the West, it will be visible, but, um, it will span the total eclipse 
meaning when the um, the moon is being completely eclipsed will span about an hour and 43 minutes. And then there's another two hours where it will be partially eclipsed. And so that's pretty significant um, time frame. Oftentimes it's, it's much, much shorter than that. So what's happening here is that the sun, the earth, and the moon are in perfect alignment for this to occur, right? And that's what causes um, an eclipse, a lunar eclipse. And in this case, we also have the planet Mars, which is in retrograde right now, um, also in alignment. And this makes it sort of extra potent and, and of extra significance, right? So the Earth is passing between um, the Sun and Mars at the same time. And um, this eclipse is also, you're probably going to hear the term or you've read the term blood moon, right? Blood moon eclipse. Because the moon will appear red and that's happening because of the light filtering um, from the sun and also because of the proximity to Mars, the red fiery planet, right? So um, the moon will appear red and it's called a blood moon in, in sort of ancient times. That's where that name comes from. You know, when people didn't necessarily understand um, the mechanics of it, th then it was very symbolic, right? And, and it's still, you know, that imagery is very symbolic still today. So this is also known as, um, you might hear it referred to as Thunder Moon or Full Buck Moon as well. Those are also names given to this, this full moon. Um, and it's happening, th the, um, the totality is happening at 421 p.m., uh, Eastern time. That's Eastern time. So you adjust accordingly for your time zone. But again, it's it's spanning a long time, but that is sort of the um, the pinnacle, if you will, of the eclipse. And there's also a conversation happening with the asteroid Lilith. I'm not going to really focus too, too much on that. But, you know, Lilith will also be opposing the sun in this, during this eclipse. And so that brings an extra layer of, of depth, right? Lilith is a bit of a, a badass, <laughs> um, female kind of, you know, warrior energy in a sense. Um, and there's lots out there on Lilith if, if you want to, if you want to explore that further, then um, I, I encourage you to do that, right? So looking at my notes as always, and there's lots to talk about here. I could talk on this topic for quite a long time. I'm trying to pick out what really stands out to me as significance and as the messages that really, you know, want to be spoken kind of thing. Um, so I kind of see the theme of this eclipse as let it all go, see what stays, right? So you may have seen there, I think there's a Facebook meme, something like that, that says that. And it's kind of what this eclipse is about. An eclipse of the moon is about, as I said, a letting go. Um, and this one is particularly significant because of the conversation with Mars. Um, and it's happening on the south node of the moon. So the nodes are always involved in eclipses. And they either happen close to the south node or close to the north node. And this one is happening close to the south node of the moon, which the south node represents the past. It represents um, what's very familiar to us and what we need to move away from um, or let go of. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat. If we want to evolve and move forward towards, you know, sort of our, our soul's destiny, and we're talking here about the collective nodes, right? So our collective destiny, if you will. And the south node, again, it's about sort of moving away from our collective past. And 
Something occurred to me just before I turned the camera on actually to shoot the video that I hadn't even written in my notes, so I quickly jotted it down. The sign of Aquarius is associated with a lot of things, but one of them is our, our collective trauma, our ancestral trauma, if you will. And I kind of see this in some ways as as a purging of that, like this karmic reckoning, um, this, this mass collective letting go of our collective ancestral trauma, right? And cutting those cords, not, not saying like, I'm going to bury my sand, my head in the sand and pretend this never happened. No, we have to we have to learn from that. We have to take those experiences and we have to grow from them, right? But letting go of the emotional um, attachment in some way to that ancestral karma, right? And so I think this is a really important thing to consider when we're looking at this eclipse. And it, and it really just sort of popped into my head um, before I, you know, I came on to speak to you and I, I, I thought, wow, yeah, that, that is, you know, there's all this other stuff, but really that's a really important piece of the puzzle. Um, the eclipse is happening in conjunction with the south node and Mars in the sign of Aquarius, right? And so I want to just say to you here to, before I move on, that um, it's going to impact most significantly, the fixed signs, specifically people that have um, planets and points around between zero and 10 degrees of the fixed signs. And the fixed signs are um, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, right? And, and so if you have planets and points in that area of four degrees of Aquarius, or, or the other three fixed signs, you are likely going to, to have quite a um, relationship <laughs> with this eclipse, right? And, and so that's, you know, if you know your chart, take a look at it and see. And of course, again, you know, if you get a personal reading, then you will have your chart um, and you'll be able to take a look and see see well where those planets and uh, points fall or where what house Aquarius falls in for you and when I get to the end of everything else I have to say I'm going to uh, address these eclipse energies in terms of where they fall for each of the signs and how you may feel this um, this you know karmic release karmic reckoning karmic letting go um, purging if you will what area of life you, you will likely experience that in the most, right? And so, um, sort of a, a resetting, particularly an emotional resetting, is on offer here. And, you know, the moon... It rules our emotions and our feelings. Um, also, it's about home and family, about vulnerability and security, right? And there is this balancing between the moon energies and the energies of the sun, right? So this rational intelligence represented by the sun um, and emotional intelligence represented by the moon, right? It's sort of the head and the heart, Um practical and intuitive action versus receptivity and also this theme of the individual versus the collective um, also you know evidenced by the fact that it's in Aquarius opposite Leo right which is the, the Aquarius is the collective Leo is the individual so I was thinking about this and how you know, how we can respond to these energies. And truth be told, this may be, be a very, very emotionally intense time. 
And Mars in close conversation with um, the moon and the south node can have us feeling very frustrated, very wanting to break free. It can have us being quite impulsive, perhaps even, you know, enraged on some level or being um, like not thinking before we we do and really wanting to just break free and breaking free is a good thing right now but we want to just be mindful right of how we're doing that we don't want to to go at it like a bull in a china shop um and on that note this eclipse is also happening in conversation with the planet uranus which is in taurus which is kind of that metaphor for the bull in the china shop um and so we want to be mindful of how we are going about this release and this letting go. We also, you know, I, I fear mongering is never my thing, but I just want to, um, I just want to take note of the fact that we can run the risk of, you know, physical injury right now or accidents if we're not paying attention and if we're not taking care of our physical self and if we're just kind of going at things um, without thinking and just being really reckless. Rec reckless behavior is possible right now too, right? And so really try to be mindful. Um, something else that's happening, which is of significance, is Mercury is going retrograde the day before the eclipse clips on the 26th so like tomorrow today's the 25th um and so that's a signpost or that's a flag going hey slow down think before you act there is even though it may seem like there is not there is time to review to reflect to double check um you know you don't want to start blurting things out or firing off nasty emails or um, raging at people or, you know, turning your rage inward on yourself either. You don't want to do that. Um, you want to just reflect, review, think before you act, all of those things, right? And Mercury is sending us that message right now. So we can, we can feel like stuff has to happen, right? And it, it's just like this emotional overwhelm. But Mercury's saying, yep, stuff has to happen, but all in due time, right? So no need to rush it kind of thing. And I think I started to say that I, I feel like there are kind of three ways that we can respond to this eclipse energy. And so in my mind, I, it's like we can do the Aquarian thing, right? And be the detached observer totally, take a step back. Um, and just go, you know, I am stepping away from this and just watching what's going on. And, um, I'm not getting emotionally invested in any of it. Um, or I am just going to go with the group, right? Because Aquarius is all about the group and the collective. And I'm just going to go along to get along that kind of thing. Although Aquarius is also about rebellion and individuality but it, it's it's got this detached energy and um this this kind of um it's concerned with being part of the group but not necessarily emotionally invested in the group so we could we could do that right um we can succumb to the intensity of, of the emotions and, and start a war internal or external, right? With that Mars frustrated energy. And, you know, again, probably not, <laughs> not the most beneficial approach. It's probably, you know, ending up resulting in maybe doing or saying things that we may later regret. Or we can endeavor to balance those, right? Those two energies. And what I wrote down here is, like with a dose of, of Leo, right, which is 
focus on our individuality and our autonomy and our, um, our life force. And a nod from the trine between Jupiter and Neptune, right? Which is this, this energy of looking at the bigger picture, of um, connecting with uh, something greater than ourselves, with this going with the flow as well. Um, you know, so use the medicine of the, the North Node in Leo. Be the leader, right? Be the leader and be concerned with yourself and your own autonomy and your own needs. Um, but don't be a martyr. And, you know, care about others, but not to the... Um, not to, not to leave yourself behind, right? In in all of this, it's it's about. I think I said I might have said this already at the beginning of the video, but it's worth repeating here. It's about I'm gonna do me, you do you. <laughs> it's all it's all good, right? And I'm gonna lead by example. Leo at its best does that. I'm gonna radiate my light and my life force, and I'm gonna shine and lead by example. And not concern myself with, you know, having to belong or again, go along to get along kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to care about you and take care of you, but I also expect the same in return. So there's this sort of balance, right? Um, so also, Something I wrote down here is be honest with yourself about your own role in any chaos that's going on in your life right now, right? Where are you contributing to that? Sometimes it's really hard for us to, to shine that light on ourselves and we like to um, project that onto others. And you know, we need to kind of take a look. A lunar eclipse, the, the moon is about looking inward and an internal process of, you know, self-reflection and where are we, where are we contributing to the chaos in our lives and how can we change those patterns? How can we cut the cord there, right? How can we leave those, those patterns behind and say, okay, enough, I'm done. I'm going to do this in a different way now. I'm going to do it in a new way. Um, and we may not know what that new way is just yet. That's okay. We're in this kind of in-between phase, right? This between these two solar eclipses. We're kind of in the in the weeds right now, in, in a sense, um, in the darkness right now, in a sense, on some levels. Um, but that's that's where we're meant to be, and that's okay. So the not knowing everything is is it's okay right now. That's you know, that's where we're at. Um So I think that I started to, you know, I talked about the trine to Neptune and Jupiter, which is in Scorpio. Neptune's in Pisces, Jupiter's in Scorpio, right? The water signs. Um, Cancer is ruled by the moon, which obviously is involved in this eclipse heavily. And I think we need some water medicine here. That's kind of how I feel. If you, I wrote a post on Facebook yesterday and it was sparked by um, a, a quote by um, Charles Bukowski that's really, really significant in my life. And I use this as sort of a, a, a guidepost for me. And it's what matters most is how well you walk through the fire. And that's sort of a metaphor for what's going on right now. And I wrote about that on Facebook. If you want to go check it out, you can. Again, the link's below. Um, but really, if you take a look at what's going on in the world right now, right, there is a lot of, there are literal fires raging all over. There are volcanoes erupting. There is, there are fiery tempers uh, and behaviors everywhere. And so we need 
some water <laughs> to cool things down here, I think, right? We we need some water medicine to, to calm the nervous system too. Nervous system um, can be really overloaded right now. Really overloaded and short-circuiting, right? That's an Aquarian characteristic kind of thing. And um, a characteristic of Uranus, right? The, the nervous system and that, that electricity kind of thing. Um, and so we need to, to calm the nervous system. We need to take care of our physical selves and our mental and emotional health right now. It's so, so important, right? Take care of ourselves. That's where that, you know, focus on the self, that Leo energy is really important not to the complete nth degree like you know the shadow side of leo leo is being very self-involved kind of thing uh we, it's it's not to that degree but it's it's we need to stop being the martyr and we need to factor ourselves into the equation you know i say that a lot but it's really significant at this point in time um and you know, be willing to go with the natural flow of things, right? Water goes with the flow. Allow what wants to happen to happen without trying to fight and rage against it so much. Allow what wants to be released to be released, right? And um, what wants to be healed to be healed. Allow for that happening. I, I talked off the top about, you know, our our collective trauma. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We, we don't tend to, to acknowledge that and recognize that, you know, the, the Anishinaabe community is really, really waking up to that fact in their own culture and with their own an ancestry and roots. But we all have that ancestral trauma, that collective trauma somewhere, right? And, and so reckon whether that's in our, our court like our family of origin our ancestry our our you know ancestral culture that kind of thing we have that i know it's, you know i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a little bit of a personal example of this in a second before i talk about um, how this is impacting each of the signs so you can see how this plays out in real life right but allowing ourselves to heal as i said and you know Allow the transformation to happen, right? And and allow us to, to be led by our hearts, heart-centered energy, Leo energy, right? So before I, um, I talk about how this is going to impact each of the signs, right? The big letting go kind of thing. Two things. I want to show you the chart. I forgot to do that. So I'm going to show it to you right now. Um, so here is the chart. And I'm going to just point out to you, okay, so here is the south node in Aquarius, right there. See, there's the moon, there's Mars, there's Lilith, right? Um, so these things are all kind of lined up here. And then across the chart, we've got the sun with the north node. And then I was talking about Jupiter and Scorpio making a trine, um, Neptune and Pisces right there part of the trine and then we have um the square to uranus and taurus right there okay so just sh showing you that and so on a personal level again just just to kind of illustrate this in in real life right um this first of all talking about like the ancestral piece and the and, and that kind of thing uh, without going into the nitty gritty details, because I will be here forever, I won't, there'll be a book at some point. Um, but this eclipse is happening for me on my son's birthday, July 27th. And on the day that we'll begin a week long visit with um, some family, and my brother is coming to visit um, my brother and sister-in-law and bringing friends along. And then we'll have a bunch of extended family and friends that are coming over the week as well. And um, to make a long story short, this is a, an area of life that's been really, really highlighted um, for many years now because I didn't know I had a brother. <laughs> um, 
I found out, I can't even remember exactly, I'm terrible with dates, but about five years ago now, I think, right? And things are coming, um, you know, there's been this sort of roller coaster up and down in terms of, of my, uh, my parents and, uh, you know, lots of different things, again, without going in right down the rabbit hole with you here. But um, there is some, some collective family ancestral trauma, right? And there are some, some patterns and things like that, that I really feel it's time to release. I'm feeling that that is really coming up and bubbling up for all of us in some way, shape or form. And so it's really quite interesting and curious um, that this is happening on the day of this eclipse that this this you know uh, coming together of, of of family will take place it's not the first time this has happened by any stretch but there's there's something different about this this time um and so so there's that and then personally for me this eclipse is happening in um on the axis of my sixth and twelfth houses which is like the daily grind kind of thing or the practical versus the spiritual right um it's the virgo pisces axis for me which is um virgo is my rising sign pisces is my sun sign and so i'm there is this 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 letting go or purging i feel and of course these things don't just happen on the day of the eclipse right like these energies you will have felt sort of coming in for a while now and then will play out for, for months after the fact as well. But it's, you know, the, the day of the eclipse and the day surrounding it are sort of like the, the big shining a light on it sort of thing. Um, and so this, again, this axis for me or where this is playing out for me is this, this need to be sort of in control of the day-to-day -day Virgo in the sixth house. Um, and really sort of, you know, detail oriented and, and having to know the plan and all of this kind of stuff. And Pisces, the, the letting go and just letting it happen, what will be, will, will be and, um, acceptance of it. And also, um, the the being in service to to others being in service a sixth house and then that also addressing your own spiritual needs on a more internal level which is 12th house right and so i've been very consciously aware that this eclipse is drawing my attention to those energies in my life so I'm not going to belabor that because we're already past 30 minutes here. I just wanted to t sort of illustrate to you, you know, real life example. And um, I'm going to go through each of the signs now. And I'm going to just give you a tidbit about where this may be impacting you um, most significantly. Okay. So again, this is largely rising sign oriented. But so if you know your rising sign or your ascendant sign, listen to that first and foremost, because that tends to be how it will be experienced on the material plane, right? Like the physical world. And then you can also listen for your sun sign and your moon sign for added layers of information um, and insight. But again, if you want to get really specific, then you know, have a chart reading done and you can, um, you'll know even in more detail for yourself, how this and other transits and just in general, you know, how things impact you and you'll, you'll have a much greater understanding of your, yourself and it's it, having a reading is very validating and, um, you know, it can shine a light on sort of your, your soul's path, that kind of thing. But here we go, beginning with Aquarius, because for Aquarius, this is happening in your first house, right? So this is all about the self, Aquarius. It's who you appear to be in and in relation to the other. It's happening on the first house, seventh house axis, right? So self versus the other, 
uh, autonomy versus relationship kind of thing, me versus the other. So it's about your approach to life and, and your self-image as well. So you can have this karmic reckoning or letting go or purging um, or some emotional intensity um, in that area of life specifically, right? And then Capricorn, this is happening in your second house. This is about your values, what you value, um, your self-worth, your resources, right? Material resources and other kinds of resources too, like your financial resources, um, how you use your skills and talents to make your way in life or to, um, to take care of yourself kind of thing. And this is on the axis of your shared, your resources, your resources versus shared resources, the second and eighth house. So there can be an interplay between those two things and that sort of karmic reckoning or letting go in that, uh, in that area. Right. And then for Sagittarius, this is happening in your third house. The third house is about our immediate environment. It's about communications, our thoughts. Um, it's, it, it rules that area, you know, when we're speaking of immediate environment, like our, our communications and relations with peers and siblings and cousins and neighbors, those people that are in our community sort of thing. And so it's about immediate environment versus bigger picture, all about our communications and our thinking and our, and our intellect. So that's um, where this is happening for you, Sag, largely in your third house. Scorpio, this is your fourth house. So this is about home, family, roots, ancestry, um, the subconscious as well. And on this axis of home versus work, and there may be, you know, a bit of a, a struggle going on there um, and some difficulty balancing that, but also this this need for a letting go or a, a, a purging, right? In that fourth house area of a, rec a karmic reckoning in that area. Libra, this is happening in your fifth house of um, your creative self-expression. Of any children that you are acquainted with or work with or have um, in your life. Also, it's about the, the fifth house is like about risk taking and pleasure too. Um, and it's... It's about the self, it's the natural house of Leo versus the group, right? So, you know, your own, your own fun kind of thing versus um, the, the, the fun, fun for the group in a, in a, in a way, I guess. It's, it's your sovereignty versus your attachment to the collective right? To the group. That's the axis this is happening on. And there may, again, you know, this karmic reckoning, purging, letting go in that area. Um, for Virgo, this is happening in your sixth house of the daily grind of being in service to others. Also health and wellness routines. Um, and it's happening on this axis you heard me spoke about with my own personal experience because I'm a Virgo rising of the practical, mundane day-to-day -day versus the spiritual, right? And the inner sort of world. Um, keeping in mind that these, these explanations are, you know, they're very simple, right? We can talk about each of these houses um, in much more depth, but I'm giving you a tidbit here. Um, a touchstone kind of thing. So for Leo, this is happening in your seventh house of one-to-one -one relationships and close partnerships and contracts, um, you know, marriages and those kinds of partnerships come in, fall, fall into this category, but close business partnerships, any kind of close one-to-one -one relating. Also of, of like one-to-one -one relating in, in, in the sense of like rivalries you may have as well, right? So this is about um, the other, right? Seventh house versus me. Autonomy versus partnership. So you're going to see like, for 
this is happening on an axis, right? So two signs will be involved in this axis. For So for, for um, Leo, this is happening in your seventh, but the opposite of Leo is Aquarius. It's happening in the first. So those two energies are interplaying, right? Okay, moving on. Cancer, this is happening in your, in your sorry, in your eighth house um, of transformation, of intimate merging with another, of shared resources, um, of the hidden psyche and occult knowledge, right? Hidden knowledge. So it's, it's largely about shared resources versus my resources kind of thing. Um, and so that is where this, this letting go, this purging, um, you know, may happen. Um, mostly anyways. Gemini, this is happening in your ninth house. And so this is about the bigger picture, right? The ninth house governs kind of the bigger picture, your philosophy, um, your, um, your belief system, higher education, foreign cultures. Um, it's about the, the, the immediate or the close environment, right? Third house versus the bigger picture ninth house so the focus here is 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 the ninth house for gemini that may be where you may have some kind of karmic reckoning or reboot um emotional catharsis that kind of thing in that ninth house area taurus this is happening in your 10th house um so this is the axis of public versus private right career versus home kind of thing. And so the 10th house governs your career and your highest ambitions, ambitions and your public image and persona. It's about your authority and reputation um, and aspirations. And so there may be this, again, um, letting go, this cutting of the cord, this emotional um, intensity purging in that area. Two more to go here. Aries, the 11th house of groups and, and friendships, humanitarian causes, um, your hopes and visions for the future, right? This is the area of the 11th house. And it's the axis of your kind of like your commitment to the collective versus the commitment to self, right? And so that 11th house area of, of groups and associations um, may be where you are feeling this reset this reboot this karmic reckoning or letting go um, and then lastly pisces this is happening in your 12th house which is actually you know it's the it's pisces rules the 12th and um this is that that house of spiritual spirituality of of the inner life of the unseen of the subconscious um the shadow self as well right it can be um, the house of our undoing kind of thing, because Pisces can be associated with unhealthy escapism um, and addictions and that kind of thing. And, but at its best, it's it's about the spirituality. Um, it also rules, something I don't mention much when I'm talking about the 12th house, but it is relevant. It rules institutions like prisons and hospitals and that kind of thing um, as well. You know, sort of institutions of, of confinement in a sense. So it's about the access of the mundane or the practical versus the spiritual. And so for Pisces, um, you know, this 12th house area can be the area where you are feeling this, this purging and letting go happening, um, this karmic reckoning, this um, acknowledgement and hopefully release of some kind of ancestral, you know, trauma in this area. Okay, so that is that for all the 12 signs and this is quite a long video i'm going to leave it there and i'm going to wish you all the best i'll be back to speak to you next week um where we will be once again between eclipses and uh you know talk about um what's coming up for us then but take good care of yourself it's really important during this time you know try to again cool that um, emotional fire that's that may be happening for you right now right and try to be really really mindful and um, 
think about that Mercury retrograde, right? Think before you act kind of thing. And, uh, but also be willing to embrace what wants to happen and be willing to let go of what wants to go. All right. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you being here. Take good care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.